The first mistake that I see all Warzone Pacific players making is not running Combat Scout. That's right, I know the cheesiest perk in Verdansk is now the most overpowered, most useful thing in Caldera. It's almost like they knew where the map was going when they added it. And for those who are unfamiliar, Combat Scout is actually a perk 3 slot. That's the yellow one for the uninitiated. And in Verdansk, everyone was using Amped. Amped was super useful in Verdansk because you were switching between long and short range fights all the time. But in Caldera, you don't have to do that at all. Now, what's the main benefit of Combat Scout? Well, it gives you a red outline of your enemy for a little bit of time right after you've shot them. Now, the little bonus tip I was mentioning at the beginning of the video is actually if you use incendiary ammo, it increases that time drastically. So using Combat Scout is basically the difference between never losing somebody in the trees and brush again, so long as you can get a shot off, versus constantly yelling, where are they? The second mistake I see Warzone Pacific players making all the time is running nerfed weapons. That's right, I'm looking at you, everyone with an OTS, an EM2, a Swiss, anything like that, man. Read the patch notes. And if you're somebody who's gonna be in the comments like, oh, I'm still frying with my OTS, then good, switch to a Vanguard weapon and you'll get way more kills, I promise. I saw somebody with a Cold War MP5 yesterday. Like, what, what are we doing here, people? That gun got nerfed into the ground. There's a reason I saw it on the floor. <laughs> the third mistake that I see Warzone Pacific players making is running stuns instead of stims, or anything instead of stims, really. I even have a few players in my own squad who just refuse to make the switch because they're so used to using stuns, but with the stun duration getting cut in half, you can't stun from outside a building and push. You have to bust the bottom door and then stun up the stairs, which is still useful, but it just doesn't seem to happen as much in Caldera as it did in Verdansk. What I find happening a lot in Caldera is I'm actually 20 meters further away from my opponent than I want to be, and with the new buff to stims making it so that they not only instantly start healing you, but also give you a movement boost to not just your walking speed, but also your slide speed. It makes it so you can pull off some insane movement, even if you're not that good at movement. Like, multiple times on this map, I've stemmed right past somebody and got to shoot them in the back because I was already turning around mid-slide, and when it happens to you, it honestly looks like some sort of hack. People just fly right past you, and if you're not on PC, you can't whip around super fast. So unless you're really good about using your rotational aim assist, you're kind of stuck. And at this point, I would much rather you guys be doing that to other people than other people be doing that to you. Use stims instead of stuns, trust me, you won't go back. Now the fourth mistake that I see a lot of Warzone Pacific players making is that they're actually playing the wrong game type. And by that, I want to straight up come out swinging and say that Vanguard Royale is terrible. And if you're one of the people who hates on the game and you only play Vanguard Royale, there's your problem. Before the game came out, I was actually really enthusiastic about Vanguard Royale because I was like, hey, there's no heartbeat sensors, there's no thermites, like this is going to be great. But in reality, they just buffed the Molotovs, so now the Molotovs are just as bad as Thermites were. All the vehicles in Vanguard Royale suck, except for the plane, which is super overpowered. And until, like, yesterday, all the floor loot was terrible. And I will give credit where credit is due, the floor loot is much better now, but the amount of world audio in that game type is just astronomical. They have since removed the bombing run and turned down the sound effects, which is good, but if you hop in, it still feels just as bad as it did on day one, except for maybe the fire sale is shortened now, and it's not, it's not quite as hectic the entire game, but it basically feels like a glorified rebirth, and I feel like that's even kind of talking down on rebirth a little bit. It's just all in all, the normal battle royale is much better. The heartbeat sensors are almost non-existent, I think because most people are rocking stims now, and I don't think I've seen a thermite since the update. One thing I will say though is getting crushed by helicopters still sucks. But all in all, it's just a much more fun game type, and my biggest complaint about Vanguard Royale is you kind of have to thirst people when you kill them because there's so many fire sales, there's so many self-revives. Like I said, basically like playing Rebirth. You really have to waste the ammo on the thirst when I'm trying to get better at just prioritizing the next opponent. I don't know about you guys or where you're at in your COD journey, but for me, I'm trying to get better at managing, you know, enemies two, three, and four. And it's hard to do that when I think about the first guy having self-revive and when they all have self-revive. You're really just like, okay, I have to wipe this team in 30 seconds or it's not happening. The fifth mistake I see people making inside of Caldera is using bad ground loot. Now, the ground loot did get dramatically buffed here in the last few days inside of Caldera, which is amazing, but there's still only a few guns you should really be picking up, those being the green and above STG, the green and above bar, green and above MP40, that purple PPSH is a monster. If you have the purple PPSH, I would just get your ghost loadout. The ground loot green Bren has gotten me a few kills. I normally pick it up and swap it out as fast as I can. It is a good secondary to have, though, if you don't have one already. The purple Thompson is really good as well. 
I think it's the M1912 technically, but it's, it's the one that looks like a Tommy gun. As always, the NZ41 is a pretty good pickup. And one thing I want to call out is don't pick up a shotgun. If anything, leave a shotgun as bait. At the start of the game, I see a lot of people picking up shotguns and dying with them. Leave it for the person behind you to pick up. They'll be over enthusiastic because they'll have a shotgun. They'll be like, oh, we're close range. I'm going to kill this guy. And as long as it's a double barrel or an einhorn, they're never going to get that kill. It's basically a free kill for you. I know it sounds counterintuitive to skip the gun, but the double barrel shotgun that's ground loot is terrible and so is the einhorn. You're much better off with your 1911, especially now that you can trigger spam the 1911. Outside of the main one to three ARs that are good and the main three SMGs, there's really not a lot of good ground loot inside a caldera. Uh, like I said though, the new update really made that a lot better. Before it was basically pick up an NZ41 until your loadout hits. Now there's a few viable guns. Again, that purple PPSH is really good. I think now there's actually a blue Bren as well that has a sight on it. That one is super useful. I, can't, I don't know if that was a Gulag gun I got from somebody or if that was actual ground loot. I'm sure some of you will let me know in the comment section down below. But all in all, stick to the kind of meta pool of weapons. Uh, don't try to kill somebody with an Itra Burst that you find on the ground. Don't pick up a machine pistol and think you're going to do something with it. If you're the kind of player that knows they're good enough to use those things, more power to you. Keep frying, my guy. But for most people, use the main pool of weapons. Don't stray from it. Because right now, the outliers are really bad. Oh, the AS44, though, is pretty good. It's got a good rate of fire on it. I was actually beaming some people with that last night, but I hadn't really before. It was a little shaky before the update. It's a little better now. All right, now the sixth mistake that I see Warzone Pacific players making is dropping in random locations. All right, I get it. It's the new map. You want to see the whole map. You want to, like, you know, explore all the nooks and crannies and find the bunkers and go through the caves and all that. I get it. But you need to get there through progression of your game. You can't just be dropping there and expecting to have a good game. If you want to have a good game and you want to get to end game and you really want to play, my advice is pick two, maybe three spots that you land depending on where the plane goes. The easiest way to do this is to have one on one half of the map and one on the other. That way, pretty much no matter where the plane goes, you've got a drop where you know you can go, you know where the spots are. If you get shot in the back, you know probably about where that's from. You don't have to like turn around and look out into the abyss that is Caldera and, and hope that you can maybe see the guy who shot you. You know where it's coming from because you've landed there three times already today. You've seen somebody on that ledge twice. Even if you're not a great player, subconsciously you just start to learn, hey, there might be a guy on the third floor. There's a really cheesy spot right there where he can just sit and then you'll pre-aim it next time. And that'll get you that extra kill that'll start your snowball a little bit easier. Instead of just dropping in a random spot, you know, you drop capital one game, you you drop airfield the next game, you drop peak the next game, then you're in field and you wonder why you're not doing well. It's because you're not giving yourself surroundings to learn. It's like learning a whole bunch of different math equations on the same day. You're never going to remember them. Learn one and practice it. That's probably a terrible analogy, but just go with me. Now, mistake number seven that I see a lot of people making, and this is especially in the main battle royale, which again, if you remember earlier, is the one I suggest to be playing, is you need to be popping UAVs a lot. The first 10 minutes of the game, because there's not planes to fly around in and fire sales going off and all this stuff you have a bunch of money and like no reason to head towards a buy so most people don't you'll hear the one or two ground loot uavs go off but if you hop in prioritize getting 18 grand and then pop a triple uav which now shows ghosted players obviously no one will be ghosted right off the rip in a new game but prioritizing that 20 grand instead of loadouts or instead of you know self revives and ammo boxes and all this other stuff you'll have way more information than most of the map because quite frankly most people just don't head to buy stations in Caldera. In Verdansk, they got camped, but in this game, they're pretty empty most of the time. There's also more of them than there were in Verdansk, or at least it feels like there's more of them. But long story long, it is my favorite thing to prioritize right off the rip, and also in the mid to late game as well. Triple UAV, triple UAV, triple UAV is so useful. You'll never get shot in the back again, and again, you don't have to carry a heartbeat sensor. Prioritizing UAVs and using stims is a great way to stay not one step, not two steps, but like three meters ahead of your opponent for most of the game. The only people you'll really have to contend with is other teams or people running the same strategy. Now, the eighth mistake that I see people making inside of Caldera is actually trying to level up Vanguard guns in Caldera. With the exception of the one plunder XP glitch that got patched almost instantly, it is a complete waste of your time to try to level up weapons inside of Caldera. Rebirth Island, I can hear an argument for just because the amount of engagements you can get in there is a little bit higher, but that's only if you're really good at Rebirth. If you're only average 
averaging 12 kills or less a rebirth game, I would highly recommend scrapping that strat and walking into Vanguard multiplayer, popping a double XP token, or abuse some of these free double XP weekends that Activision keeps throwing at us. I don't know why they keep doing that. I think it's to boost sales, but I'm not really sure. If you're looking for a strategy to help you outside of this free double XP weekend, I have a video right here. And with that being said, we could finally move on to mistake number nine that I see every Warzone Pacific player make, and that is bad rotations and just playing too low in general. I'll touch on this for a minute, but most of this is gonna be explained through a second video I have that is actually already up. It'll walk you through my personal process for dropping and rotating on teams to get high kill games and wins. If that style of content interests you, I would highly recommend checking out the video. There's a ton of great value in there if you are somebody who's looking to get better at Warzone Pacific. I know I am, I hope you guys are too. I'm sure you are if you're here at this point in the video. As always though, my name has been Pineapple. I hope you guys did enjoy. And with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys very soon here with a brand new Warzone Pacific video. All right, peace.